Community's new house at Kyle, uh, Coolia, Callan, County Kilkenny. And I'm joined in the Jeep, I hope, by Kate Taylor Zawada. Hello, Kate. Hello, Sue. And how are you doing out there? Fine, fine, fine. It's been very busy, very hectic, but well, fine, thank you. So set the scene for us then, Kate. What exactly is going on out there today? Well, at the moment, we've got lots of people just arriving for our open day. Um, we've set up a stage and we've got streamers and such like flying. And lots of people are actually coming here to celebrate the open day of our second house called Balboshti, um, here in Camp Hill. Okay, Bugaboshti meaning what exactly? Soft. Rainbow. Rainbow. Rainbow, that's yeah. a Bugaboshti. Yeah. Very, right. well, your Irish is better than mine, Kate. <laughs> <laughs> Where do you come from, Kate? Well, I'm actually English, but I've got Irish connections back from Cork. And you're a co-worker there at Camp I Hill. I am. Uh, to tell us a little bit about Camp Hill, just uh, to put everybody in the picture, Kate. Well, Camp Hill is a community for people with special needs. Um, we've actually been here at Coolia for seven years. And our work really is to support and live with people from local community and people that have travelled a bit further to, that do have special needs and that do need to live in a supported lifestyle. And there are many co-workers who come and stay here for periods of, you know, maybe six months a year, and then others that actually commit themselves to live here long term. What's diff different, uh, tell us, Kate, uh, in the way that you look after and work with people with special needs from maybe what's been done before or in other areas? Well, it's difficult to say. I mean, mainly, you know, we look at the person as a whole person, not just as, you know, somebody that has um, a handicap. We look at them as individuals that, that all have something to offer. We all, you know, we all have something to offer. We all have our work to do. And we're all equally valued, and I think that's perhaps how Camp Hill and how we at Carl aim to aim to work together. That's our main priority. How many people are actually there in the community at Kyle? Oh well, it changes a little bit. Um, at the moment, I guess we're about we're about 40, and almost half of those would be special needs people. But we also have um, two families with children, and we also have retired people that have come to live with us now, a couple. And what about the activities that go on then, Kate? Again, very varied. Um, we have many social activities. We do dancing and we have singing. We're actually going to have dancing this afternoon. And um, we do lots of work around the place. We have our own garden. We provide all our own vegetables. Uh, we have workshops. We obviously do our own cooking, cleaning. We do pottery, you know, a variety of things, quite honestly. Okay, and it's a really special day today and great, great excitement. It is, it is. I mean, we've all been preparing very hard and working very hard to make it a really special day. Okay, and can we have a word then with Jenny Frister? I'll who's pass you on to Jenny now. She's right beside me. And Jenny is uh, another co-worker. We're uh, coming to you live uh, from Kyle in Coolia, uh, where the Camp Hill community are opening their uh, second house, Bugabashti, which I've only just discovered is uh, is the Irish word for rainbow. Hello to you, Jenny. Hello, Sue. And uh, where do you come from, Jenny? I'm also English with Irish connections. <laughs> and how long have you been uh, in Kyle? I've been here since we started seven and a half years ago. I, I live here with my family. And uh, tell us about relationships with the local community then, Jenny. Very good, are they? I think we're very lucky to be working here in Coolia because it's such um, a very active community and they themselves are working in so many different social endeavours that they're very welcoming to an activity like Camp Hill. They must have been a bit surprised by you to begin with, were they? Well, of course, we're only three miles from the Camp Hill School in Ballytobin and many Coolia people had been supporting the school in Ballytobin for 12 or 13 years before we came to Coolia. So they were already well familiar. I think when Ballytobin started up, it was all a bit strange. But by the time we arrived in Coolia, they were well familiar with Camp Hill. So you're, you're way well uh, settled in and rooted into the area. Oh, yes, we feel very well settled here. And...
dear friends and neighbors. I warmly welcome you on this very dry summer afternoon with the good occasion of the official opening for this house. We're very, very happy to take part in the Kulia Centennial celebrations. And it's a, a great honor to us to be part of this festive week. It's about three years ago that we were, a good many of us, all together here for the official opening of our first house, take it home. It was a different day, it was very stormy, and Mary Robinson was taking the honors. It was quite a historic day, I think, for Julia, Kyle, and it gave a big boost to our name. Kulia Kyle was definitely on the map. I think it was three weeks in a row that we were appearing in the Kilkenny people, page wise, which is quite a known off for a small community, I guess. So we were very happy with that. Since the official opening from Tigoin, a lot of changes took place, as everybody can see and perhaps we'll see this afternoon. One of the bigger changes for us here in Kyle was of course the passing away from Ned Lahey. Our good neighbor who has always been a very good supporter for our work. And I think if you would have seen what we've done so far, you would be happy with it. And Nat always said, you can't have enough cement lorries driving in and out of Kyle. I don't mind the noise. As long as we're building, we're doing all right. So that was really great to feel that we were not annoying people with all our activities, but they were really getting excited about it. It even went that far that Nell decided to start building herself. So now it's up to us to complain about the noise. Since the opening of Tick Owen, we had loads of plans what we were going to do. But it was almost a bit in this sort of a dreamy state what we could all do. But it's only been for the last few years that we actually suddenly starting to realize our dreams. And sometimes you had the feeling that things were going faster than one could dream of. It's largely because of the European funding that our work could financially take such a development. There is a European fund for the housing for the disadvantaged. It's managed by the, or it's given out by the Department of Environment, and it's administered by the Kilkenny County Council. But administered, I think it's a, it's a small word. The Kilkenny County Council has always been very, very supportive to our work. And whenever there were some difficulties with the paperwork, they were helping us through it. People say that Camp Hill people are quite good workers, but the paperwork is not especially our hobby. And I think going through all the administrative bit, planning, getting the grants, it's been a great, great help that we were privileged to work together with the Kilkenny County Council. They were always ready for us there. Now, openings are supposed to be big thank yous, and we could go on and on and on, but there are quite a few people we can't miss out. Money-wise, we are depending on the funding of the health boards. If we see what's been done in the last year, 
We wouldn't be able to do all that without great support of the health boards. After our official opening this year, I all invite you to have a cup of tea at our new hall. It sounds incredible, but it's true. The old barn, old dwelling house is empty, mm. but it's turned into a lovely place. And you're very welcome to have a cup of tea there after the official event. Now, my side is one side of it, but if you start building, you also need builders who do the work. And the building history of this building is not especially an easy one. We went through quite a few troubles. The builder, the first builder who took on this building, ran into difficulties, and we had to pick up the pieces. And there we felt again that the local support we feel here in this area is of a tremendous strength. Stephen Brennan, building contractors, were willing to pick up the pieces and got the house together. Not only that, he took also on to renovate Davis College, which is just across the road, and you can see a fine example of his trade. <coughs> building houses you wouldn't do without an architect. Our architect, Amy Laval from Milltown, has been working with us for quite a few years now, and apart from Davis Cottage, Laura Boschley, We've got a few more examples of his art, I would call it, up in the village. We managed to build the third house. We didn't manage to do an official opening yet. We got our hall, as I said. There's also um, a building from Aiden Laval. But we also have a three-bedroom bungalow for a retired couple who came down from the north, who have been working for 20, 25 years for Camp Hill. And all these buildings you might be able to see later if you don't spend all your time in the hall with the coffee and the cake. <laughs> now, if you look through our lifestyle, you will also notice that the work we do, we do all as volunteers. Now, within the community, there are quite a few steady co-workers. But I have to be honest, the work we do here in Kyle, we wouldn't do without all the volunteers we get from abroad. There are, at the moment, people from as wide as Australia, Brazil, and America. And it is quite overwhelming to see that we almost have a queue at least at summertime, for all the people who want to come to Ireland. Ireland is a very popular place among young people in Europe, <coughs> and we are uh, harvesting the fruits of it. Camp Hill wouldn't be always the reason why they come to Ireland. It might be the music, it might be the beer, it might be the landscapes, but we definitely are taking good part of the stream of people who come continuously to our place. So that's that's that side of it. Now, I think this opening is a very special occasion because not only it is the house I'm living in, but it's also very rare, I think, in this time and age that one can be at an occasion, be among a group of people who actually have been looking at this house for 90, 94 years, like Nelly Lahi did. It's very special to be in a group of people where I can find three generations of occupants meeting for this official opening. It's very rare that one finds people who will say, well, this was 66 years ago, 22nd of February, 1930, that I closed the door on this place, like Mr. Thomas Cahill did. Just imagine, all these people find themselves, after almost a century, standing here, opening this place officially. I think it's a very official, a very special official opening, 
and I can understand that we are all very excited about it. Now, without further ado, I would give the microphone to our guest of honor, Nelly Lahi and Thomas Cahal, and I would like to hear from them also what the place looked like in the old days. being 
put today. I don't think that there is any country in the world that is doing more to help those who are unable to help themselves without a lot of assistance. They could be locked up in rooms in some big building and have all kinds of administrators running around and running into each other. But here you have workers. They're like a bunch of bees coming out of a beehive. And they are gathering and encouraging the assistance of those who thought that they were not able to contribute to their community. And by golly, they are. And they're contributing very well. And to the volunteers that uh, Paul spoke about coming from other countries, it has to have a reputation. And it has to be doing a good job. Otherwise, those people would not come from far, far away and then remain here as long as they do and for free. Who would give that type of service in this type of operation and uh, still be anxious to come without being paid a dime other than the satisfaction in their own hearts that they're doing something really worthwhile. And if the man of all is looking down on them, and he would have a little halo to put around their heads. He, they may not be Catholics, I'm sure some of them are not, but it doesn't make any difference whether they're what religion they are, or what their thinking is, as long as they're here to help Paul and his staff. And Paul deserves a tremendous hand of, a, of, of a congratulations because he and his wife and children are here and they are the rock foundation of what's going on here. Uh, I know, Paul, that you're anxious to get everybody going and to complete the program. But I want to say to you, I want to congratulate you very, very sincerely. <coughs> I want to congratulate all the volunteers who are helping you. And God bless those that you are helping in such a very practical and a very, very wonderful way. And good luck and God bless all of you. And God bless you who are here today.
in, so you can both open one of them short. morning call. Knowledge of the spiritual world will open the portals of the soul towards true hearing of this morning call. So, when the front door will be opened, then one could get into the house and have a look around. 
Of course, not everybody will be fitting into the house. That's why we've got a beautiful hall we can check out, and the coffees and the teas will be waiting there for you. After the dance, we'll be able to have a look around in the houses. You're very welcome.
you went a little bit different from me, but I didn't mind. She has, she's the voice of an angel.
just on the edge of the garden, Bridget House. Yes, yes. Well, you can look at the video. Yeah. 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 It's fixed and washed. 
My name is John Marr. I'm up from County Wexford. I actually married Josephine Walker, a member of the Walker family who owned the house previous to Camp Hill. I started visiting the area in 1985 and I'm coming back uh, ever since. I was here the last time in April for the official opening of the big house with Mary Robinson. So I'm delighted to be here and have a cup of tea and meet all the local people again today. So maybe Josephine, my wife, would say a few words now. Oh, Lord. Oh. And now I'm joined here by John Walker, who is going to speak on behalf of the rest of the family, and you will see them all in a few moments. Now, John. Thank you very much. Uh, just to say that I have lived in the house that has just been opened for 27 years or so, and it's a fantastic occasion to see what has transpired in Kyle. Uh, I have seen Camp Hill when they started their first house up at Hennessy's and uh, they have really gone from strength to strength and they provide a fantastic service for the handicapped and uh, I wish them all, their, all the best. Thank you very much. Day with nice gymnast on it. What are some of your other favourite activities? Sun. What are some, Flower. What are some of your no other favourite Sun on the back. Um, huh? um, disco and. Like walking? Yeah, walking in the mountains is good, and swimming and acrobatics. And do you like working in the bakery, I hear? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Helping someone to do some baking? Yeah. Yeah, I like disco and I like I like economics, baking, and I like and I like music and I like circuses a lot. Now that like I have to, I really do have to follow Heather's orders. <laughs>
Yes, when Campbell bought Walker's property, where the old ruins from Davies Cottage were a part of the deal, and by then pigs, hens and ducks were living in these houses, turned into a food processing bakery workshop. And this is what it looks like now. Yeah, if I read from the Kulia History and Heritage, and it says about Daly's Cottage, at Christmas 1994, 11 people moved into Walker's, renamed Bawabashi, and we began to renovate Daly's Cottage. We were in uh, spring 95 now, which stood opposite. Mr. Pat Ryan, visiting recently from Australia, told us about his aunt and uncle, Alice and Jick, Jack Kirby Daly, who lived in the cottage we now use as a bakery, and we created three bedroom spaces for co-workers here. When his mother was left widowed in Wine Gap, Alice, who had no children, wished to adopt him, but his mother couldn't agree. If she had, he would have also been our neighbor. over to the Kuliak ruins and have a look at the old church where Jack Daly was buried. Right, this afternoon we're here in the home from Nelly Lahi and we would like to look back a bit on the old days at Walker's, Bawabashti and I would like to ask now what the place looked like 50, 60, 70 years ago. Oh, in the old house houses where Walker's lived, you want to know how it looked, looked in the old days. It was a smaller house in the old days, a stone house, and it was a smaller house when the Cardinals lived there. And then Tom Cahill came to live in it too. And then after Thomas Cahill came, he went away to America, and the Walkers came to live there then. Michael Walker and his wife, Cathy, and they had a family of not eight children and they all went to cool the school and when they grew up then Pat went to the agricultural college in Cork and he was a cleaning manager and Michael and, jo and John went to school and he went to Red Meadows, the great feeding place in Gordon. County Bikini, Red Mills. And Mary married, um, Mary Walker married Billy Heffern and Carl Lesk. And then Kathy, Mrs. Walker, Michael Walker, and Margaret, they lived out here in Coyle. And then they went to, oh, in, after a while, they went to West Coast back to West Coast, to their own place in West Coast. And they sold the place, the house, a renovated house, and eight or ten acres of land to 
Uh, your people yeah. to what we call it. Campfield community. Yeah. Yes, the Campfield community. Yes. Now, what did it look around the house, the yard? Oh, yes. I, I understand the buildings the, as they are now the buildings, were different. They were different, yes. There was a small house just at the gate going in now, off the Boshin, you know, mm. off the Boshin. There was a small house there. It was a place where they stored grains, bags of feed and stuff and all that. And then there was a nice yard there, and uh, but there was no gate. There was no gate going in. It was all open. Open, open along to the to the hay barn. It was all open up along. They had a cow house then. They built a house at the back of the hay barn. A lay boy they called it. it was, I think that's what they called it. And they had twelve, and maybe up to 24 and 25 cows. Mm. They milked the cows. Yeah. And they had then then the strips, we call the strips over mm. the Boshin, over to the head of the Boshin. Yeah, that's what they land. Mm. And then they had land down the bogs too. And they were very industrious people. Mm. They were very good farmers too. In the old days, I understand, they were also milking the cows under the apple trees. Oh, that was in the cattle's time. Mm -hmm. In the cattle's time, they used to milk the cows out under the apple tree. Yeah. And it was lovely, always in the summer time. Yes, and we used to be there. But of course, it was different then in the walk of time. Everything was modern then, you know, mm -hmm. when the walk of came, you see. But in the old days, it was grand out in the uh, milking the cows under the apple tree. And then yeah. the milk all had to be brought to the creamery in Callum? Oh yes, the milk was brought down to the creamery in Churns. Mm -hmm. Someone would go with a nascent car, nascent car and the Churns in the car, and bring the milk into the, into the creamery. And the milk then would be separated in the creamery, and they'd get the skim milk to take it home mm -hmm. to feed the calves. Everyone had calves then, you know, yeah. and the milk would come home from the creamery and the calves would be fed with the milk. Yes, yeah, that's it. Now, any more questions? <laughs> Across the road, we still have Daly's Cottage. Could you say anything about Pad Daly's, Pad about Jack Daly's house? Oh, Jack Daly's house. When Jack Daly, Jack Daly was a young man, his father and mother lived there with him. And then when they died, Jack was there and he married Alice Ryan. Alice Ryan of Cooler the Cottage. She was there and she was there. Well, after some years, Alice got a, a paralytic stroke and she was in a wheelchair, yeah. the poor woman, for a long time, for a good many years, she was in a wheelchair. So she died in hospital with Kenny. And then Jack was living by himself until he went to Thomastown and he died in Thomastown Hospital some years ago. And he had a lovely dog, Jack, a lovely sheep dog. And when the day he was going away to hospital, the dog wanted to go into the ambulance with him. And he said to me, Nell, take care of Shep. I did. I used to feed Shep every day, every day I went out and I fed the dog. And the dog would be waiting for me every day outside. And then, after some time, the chiefs took over the place, Jack Daly's place, the chiefs below. And they took it over, we got to a cousin's place. And the dog went down to chiefs. Okay. Yeah, yeah. In the yard, they used to have some cow houses and animals. Oh yes, they had cow houses and all in the yard. And they had love and a nest. They had a nest, the yeah, nest and cat. And when when the cows had been coming in or going out, they'd always go to the kitchen door to talk to Ali, the cow. Yeah. They had to, to lick her and everything. They were pets, you know, the cows were pets. Alice Daly was a great woman about cows, and she loved them. 
carriage and cabs. Yes. So that's the way, that's the way the years went by. Yeah. Next to Daly's Cottage, there's new, uh, now a new building site. Pardon? Next to Daly's Cottage, there's a new building site now. Daly's so Who's building there? The, the house outside. Yeah. Where we were, where we're building now. Yeah. Is it? That belonged to Mighty Daly and his mother, Honor. And he went, she died, and he went away to America because he had two sisters in America, Katie Daly and Maggie Daly. And one of them was Mrs. Bowles. And the other was Mrs. Uh, Lefebvre. One of them was married to a German, and the other was married to a Frenchman. Two, yes, the two of them. So Michael Daly came home after some years in America, and he was married to Nellie, what was her name, from, from Mayo. He married to a lady from Mayo. And they lived outside and they had cows and calves and everything. They farmed. He had a farm, you know, and they farmed there for years. But poor Michael died of cancer after some years. And then Nelly sold out the place and went back to Mayo, back to her own people. And Michael Walker, well, the Cahills, they were uncles of Michael Walker and they bought the place. And then it came on to Michael Walker's. And Michael Walker sold it to my brother here, the house. And we, it was there now, nobody lived in it then for years and years and years. So now it was demolished. And Lahey's big, <laughs> Nelly Lahey, just in a new house in it, out in the yard. Yeah, that's, that's great. Now. Right. Perhaps we could still talk a bit about the opening. Pardon? The opening of Bawawashi. Last week we had the official opening. In, in number two. House number two. House That's number right. two, the Campy community. Yeah. We had we opened. I I didn't open it. You no. did. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> That's your house. Number two, Campy community was opened last Thursday, wasn't it? Last Wednesday. Wednesday, and then. Um, we had the um, chief of police of San, San Francisco to do the opening that day. Together with I Nelly Lahi. I did a bit of it. Nelly Lahi was helped by Thomas Cahill. <laughs> Thomas Cahill. That gets yes. the fact right. <laughs> yes. I don't know what I said to you. We've I, got it all on tape now. Hmm? We've got it all on is tape, Is it all hopefully. on tape, is it? <laughs> Let's hope so. Yeah. Oh, I don't know what I you said. said I you said quite a few words. I only said a few words. Only a few words I said. That's all. Yes. You opened it up and you were splendid. Oh. And you stood up like a big chief <laughs> there and you were splendid. You were grand, Paul. <laughs> Lovely. Yes, it's grand. Yes, and then Tom Cahill stood up and he spoke and told about his dear name. In San Francisco and everything, didn't it? We did, yes, yeah. So it was a wonderful day. We had the house blessed by Father Summers. Oh yes, Father Summers, Father Richard Summers. He blessed the house, and then uh, uh, all the people. What is it? Say that. We sung. Well, we first had to sing, "Bless this house." Bless this house. And then the Moraine choir, was, sing, was said, playing all the music, of course. Bless the shows. And then, so of course, we cut that. Tom Cahill and myself cut that. Unveiled, unveiled the house on plate. The, yes. On, and yes. then cut the ribbon. Cut the ribbon, yes. Right. We called the house Bos. Bawa Boshti. Bos. Bos. Bogo. Bawa Boshti. Bogo Boshti. Bogo Boshti. Bogo Boshti. And. The house was blessed, and we went then, Tom and I, and we cut the ribbon. Mm. Beautiful rainbow ribbon. Now, there it is, yes. Look at who's looking in. Yes, she's looking in here. 
Uh, and it was lovely. We had a beautiful day then. All the people came in then to see the house inside, into, into uh, his house. Is that right? Yes. After lovely. that we all had a cup of tea and coffee? Yes. In the new we, hall? In the new, in the new house, yeah. yes. And then we were sitting the house round and everyone was delighted. In going into the house to see the new house, it was beautiful, and it is beautiful. Mm -hmm. Yeah, lovely house, and long, long happy years to you and your wife and family. This is June sunshine. Thank you very much. And all the patients then to the haven for the needy, the poor people that need comfort and everything and they have all that outside in Paul's house. Wonderful how they're all, all treated, all the poor patient we call them, the people in need. Yeah, they lovely. They're splendid young. Yourself and Renata, she's splendid, yeah. 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 This was quite an exciting week for Korea. It was a very exciting week. I was nearly killed. I said, I'll never look over again. After, after the launching of the book, I went in, we went into the clinic to launch to cool the book. And I was writing the whole night, writing my name the, the whole night. For the I book. believe you have to sign all the books now. Hmm? You have to sign all the books. All the books, mm. yes, yes. That's the book. And my name is inside on it. <laughs> oh, <laughs> with the kindest regards. Yes. There you are. Now, that's the book. Thank you. Cemetery mass we had. Yeah. We had the centennial mass. Then. Centennial mass. What is it? We had the cemetery mass. Oh, we had the cemetery mass in Kula. Yeah. After the opening, after the opening of number two campaign, we had a cemetery mass in Kula. The four priests conservation mass above in the cemetery in Kula that night. Yes, and it was lovely. Crowd, the crowd, the place was crowded with people, and it was a beautiful mass. And they had the choir was beautiful, and Maraid Murray played the organ there that night. Yes, and Michael Power had that. He had, wasn't he? Mm -hmm. Michael Power too. Yes, he had his. I think she had a bagpipe, hadn't he? Had he? Had no. he the bagpipe? No, I don't think so. Oh, hadn't he? Oh. He played it at the opening. Hmm. He played it at the opening. Yes, at the Bauer opening. Yes, yeah. that's it. He played it at the opening. Well, then we went on to the Friday night. Friday thing. night. Friday night. We had, then we had the Bishop Lawrence Forrester in Cooley Chapel. Yes, chapel, the hundred year old chapel. And Bishop Lawrence Forrester, Bishop Lawrence Forrester came and he. He said Mass in Kula Chapel and he gave a beautiful sermon to all the people and he welcomed all the people then to Mass in that Friday night, the 9th of August. Am I saying to after you? The, no, we're right. After the cemetery Mass we after had the, a welcome for the visitors. 
in yes. the old school. Mm. Oh, yes. And yes. Tom cut a welcome home cake for all the Tom visitors. Tom Cahill mm -hmm. cut a welcome home cake for all the visitors. And there were powers there yes. from America. Yes, powers from New York. And? And people from Australia. They're Lionel, Lionel, Lionel. Andrews. One of the London things. Yes, Lionel and Stacia. Yes, from Lionel and Stacia from Perth, Australia. Yeah. And the Perils from New York. And all the people then from England, mm -hmm. all the pe locals from England, all mm -hmm. the Perils have grown. And, and the Bergens. And the Bergens. And all, Ryan's. And the Lionel. Did you? Yes, mm -hmm. they were all. And you met a man who was 92? Oh, yes. From John the Cody. John Cody, I was in school with him in Kula. He went to Kula school. And then he was a guard, and he's living in New York now, and he's 92 years of age. And we had a great chat about Kula school in the long ago, when Mrs. O'Callaghan and Miss Master Joyce were teachers there. That was in 1906 and long to to the time I went to very then convent in 1914. That school has turned out lots of yes. very mm, oh, great people. Great people, Great yes. people, all the locals. Yeah, there was Brother Patrick Crook, Monsignor John Wallace, Australia, first Australia. Then there was uh, Brother Patrick, and then there was Father Larry Wallace. And Father Larry Wallace. Who works in Kilkenny. And Father, and then uh, the detective Lundergan, he was from Coola too. He was a, uh, belonged to Coola School. He was a great man in Dublin. Yeah. And um, oh, I was My so mother went to school there too. Mother. My mother went to yeah, school there too. Yeah, she went to school, yes. Mary, Mary Lee. So I think for all the locals, yes. it was a great, it was a great school time, school. you yeah, know, to be back time. in the old school. Yeah, in school. The Berrigans and the Cody's, or the Cody's, you about 24 Cody's. Mm -hmm. uh, there, were 20, there were 22 in one family, the oh Cody, dear. and all of them went to school. To school. Yeah. They were all guards afterwards in the, yeah. in the fort. Mm. And then... All uh, the Collinses. All the Collinses and all the family. people. And then uh, uh, Jim and John and Patrick, all of them. And they were all belonged to the Irish Republic of Army. Yeah, every one of them. Of them. Yeah. They said jail and... So it's lovely to own. see the, the schoolhouse being Yes, yes. the schoolhouse now is a community hall. Mm -hmm. And they have conferences and everything in it, and it's beautiful. And the ladies and do a the, great the job. The ladies, yes. Don't they? Mrs. I can I must give the names of those ladies now. Mm -hmm. Margaret Bergen and Lena Saunders and Joan mm -hmm. O'Keefe. Joan O'Keefe and then... Um, yeah. Eileen Marr. Eileen Marr, yeah. Mm -hmm. And we must talk about Billy Marr, And Dixie was running around and with a teapot Dixie. too. Oh, he was and Pat Bacon. And and so Pat they were Bacon. all serving tea they were that all night. Serving. They were all serving tea, I yeah. said to Pat, where did you yeah. learn all this great chefing? Yes, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so it was a great, we had great week in mm. Cooler. Yeah, it was so wonderful. We all to be to be remembered forever, I suppose. And James O'Neill. And James O'Neill, the yes, chairman of the community. Mm -hmm. and, and, and Billy Maher. Mm. Billy Maher, too. And yeah. they all sounded lovely on Radio Air, uh, Kilkenny, didn't they? Mm. They all sounded oh, very yes. well on Radio, Radio Kilkenny, Kilkenny. Kilkenny. Yes, where we had the program. Yes, on the program. Yes. Well, have we had two years to say now? Yes. <laughs> Mass. The, oh, the bishop, yes. yeah, the bishop, yes. Yeah. That was beautiful, the bishop, yeah, wasn't also it? Beautiful. And, and the and Coolia people put up a big tent oh, outside yes, for yes, fear yes, the yes, weather should yes, be yes, very bad. Yes, 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 yes. I think everybody put a lot of effort into the, the yes. mass. The ladies the painted the back of the old, the back the of the sanctuary yeah. during yes. the week.
and there was a plaque put up on the front of the chapel. Dixie Grace put up a plaque. Lovely stone. Mm -hmm. 1896 and 1996. Cooler to our first building. Mm -hmm. Centenary of the cool, yep. yeah. Church. Centenary of the cool, yeah. Yeah, we had all the flowers around the, uh, the church. All the flowers and in the place with all, all the decorations, landscaping. Yes, and it's all beautifully done. And we were. Cullier is definitely on the map now and with the big stone and oh, the, the big new signs stone, along the road. Yes, with the cool on it. parking lot. Yes, right and we were very grateful to the Callan Choir too for all the help. They yes. gave Cooley choir. choir. We had yes. the two choirs together yes. for yes. the occasion. Yeah, the music and was beautiful. Didn't Sister yes. Sheila yes. Uh, came along. I think we practiced for two months. Yes. And she was very good with all the input and the encouragement she gave us all. Yes. Mm. It was all lovely. Mm, beautiful. Yeah. And yeah. it was a, a lovely thought how all the visitors took up a flower to represent each country, was it? In oh, the yeah. Opportunity the gift the people on the mm. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. And the Wallace brothers contributed music, background to music. They did, yeah. You were going to tell a story about an old woman. Hmm? You were going to tell about an old woman I that had her birthday. Old old woman, she was the hundred best the hundredth birthday. And they had such brilliant us here and there to parties and everything. She said with all the parties and the turning around, she said, I live another year only for that, she said. I live to be 101, she said, only for the way they turned me around. <laughs> <laughs> and did she die on them? She, <laughs> she did. She did. She did. She did. She did. She did. Right. I live another year, yeah. she said, only, only for all the turning they turned me around. So I could say no. <laughs> I'd be turning around every day. Here and there. A big week, wasn't it, Nelly? Yeah, yeah, that's what the great it week. It was a big week. It was lovely. It was we lovely. all enjoyed it yeah. very much. And that gentleman was up, in, up at the... What's the name of the Tigon. They were up in Tigon the other evening. And he had his yeah, cameras and everything too. And to his grand. And he was here in 1990, nice. and you took all around the yard and the house here and the rooms and everything. We brought it out to see the, where they used to hold the, the mass. mass. Yes, the yes, the that's it. Yes, mm. that's right. That wasn't the penal days, that was when they had some mm. falling out. <laughs> mm. yeah. that, that was the time of the big chapel. John wanted to know when did you have mass said yeah. out? In the barn. In the barn. Oh, in the long, long ago, mm. when the when the falling out was in Cannon, the people, all the churches in the parish were all closed. The red and the schismatics. This was the father of Keith falling out that time, and all the clo the churches were closed. The parish church. Newtown Church and Cool the Church, they were all sold. And Mass was said in that old barn beyond. And for the same in Newtown, there was a barn opened in Newtown to put the Mass. And any place else where the Mass could be, I suppose, down in Bushy, nothing. But anyway, the priest used to come out from Pretenny to say Mass every <coughs> Sunday. And he used to ride a horse out from Pretenny. And one Sunday he was coming, and there was a tree knocked across the road, though he wouldn't be able to come. Wasn't that terrible bitterness? Mm. Yeah, it was bad, it? Yeah, it was bad at mm. the time, it was mm. a very bitter time. Mm. Well, there was a book written on that then, the big chapel. The big chapel. The big right. chapel. I didn't mm. ever read it. Tom Kilroy wrote the book, but I didn't ever read it. But it's a novel. It. Isn't uh, it? Yeah, More or less a novel. novel. It's not. Yeah, it isn't, uh, it's not factual. No, it, no, no. 100% factual. No, no, it isn't. No. Yeah.
now. Time to take the dahlias. <laughs> hmm? I said it's time to take the dahlias. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> now. Turn around your head. Right, don't go. Come on. Turn around. Come on. Ah, he's all right on you. Mm -hmm.
So do what you can for the others around. Yeah. Mm-hmm.